We'll devote the next half hour to looking at water scarcity in South Africa. As day zero in Nelson Mandela Bay looms larger, what actions must be taken to ensure we have access to this precious, precious resource? We'll have a host of guests discussing this. Now, with uh, dams running dry and constant leaks, the Nelson Mandela Bay municipality may soon find itself in a serious drought. This has been a growing concern since 2016, and yet little has been done to find solutions. It's now 2022, and we're once again heading towards what seems to be day zero. The South African Human Rights Commission's Limpopo manager, uh, director of water and sanitation at Nelson Mandela uh, Metropolitan Municipality, uh, uh, Martin and Amnesty International Sibusiso Kasa will join me to uh, delve into this matter. For now, we do only have uh, Barry Martin. Thank you so much for your time. Let's perhaps speak about the, the seriousness of the situation in the Eastern Cape. Uh, we know that this happened in the Western Cape where day zero was looming, but how serious is it in the Eastern Cape? So, uh, I'm not sure if you can hear me, uh, Mr. Martin. Perhaps uh, you might be on mute. Uh, can we just confirm yes. if you can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thanks. Okay, great. Perhaps just speak to us about how serious the situation is in the Eastern Cape when it comes to uh, water availability. Um, the, good evening to you, Heidi, and good evening to your listeners. Um, firstly, uh, thank you once again for having us on the show. Uh, secondly, uh, is our water situation has been become very dire at this point in time. Our average dam levels are sitting at about 12 percent. One, two of our significant dams are, are in a perilously low state. Firstly, the Porfu dams at 10.14 percent, and because of the low state of the dams, we can't take any more water out of that. And Churchill is heading rapidly that way as well. With that, uh, uh, on Friday, the average dam levels there dropped below 9%. And um, the municipality has done quite a number of things over the last couple of years in trying to avert a drought. But obviously, uh, a seven-year drought, as opposed to the previous longest drought that we experienced about three years, there's a significant difference between the two. And that's one of the things that has been a major contributor to the water situation that we are currently in. So uh, that is the context in which I think we must uh, view the situation. And unfortunately, we do not know when the rains are coming. Our, uh, we rely heavily on the South African weather services for their weather predictions. And uh, we track it very closely. And we are finding ourselves at this point in time, for the next three to four months, there is no uh, sight of normal rains for us or significant rains for us. And we're probably only looking towards our spring rains into our summer rains that can help us out of the situation currently. Mm. Uh, is there any other solution to the problem? Because, I mean, we can't predict when rain will actually uh, get uh, to the Eastern Cape, and this is probably what you're depending on for now. Uh, we are going to be speaking to the Gift of the Givers a little later on to uh, speak to them about the measures and the efforts they are making to try and assist the people of the Eastern Cape. But what else can be done to sort this out? And I ask this in the, question, in the, in the context of the fact that a lot of uh, water leaks and old infrastructure and pipes uh, have been attributed to the fact that a lot of water is lost. Uh, I'm not necessarily speaking about the Eastern Cape, but do you think that is a contributing factor? Uh, certainly that is some of the contributing factors to our uh, water situation. Um, we must bear in mind that uh, we, uh, like many other cities in the country and in the world, suffer from aging infrastructure. And just to give you an example, um, a, a township that was established in 1994, just after democracy, is 28 years old. And your water reticulation network uh, is generally uh, got a lifespan about that 25, 30 years. So even if you can call it our newest uh, uh, intervention just shortly after democracy, is already old. So that gives you an indication of how much uh, uh, um, how old our infrastructure and how vast our potential problems are coming. Also, our bulk infrastructure network um, is probably more than 50 years old already, at least, because those networks were, were uh, apart, obviously, from Neutgedacht now, uh, uh, was built back in the 60s and the 70s. So it just gives you an indication of 
uh, uh, the dilemma that we sit with, uh, uh, in in terms of the size and the age of the infrastructure. However, um, with time, certain developments has taken place in terms of developing new water resources. And Noit Gedacht was started back in 1990 already. Uh, and that first phase then was commissioned in 1992 uh, in, in, during that period. And there's been multiple phases. And the last phase that we are busy just finishing off now at the end of June will be its final phase in terms of taking it to 210 megalitres per, per day. However, I think uh, with time, what certainly this exercise of taught us is that, uh, and, and we realized that at the last drought back in 2010 already, that our water usage habits has to change, not only during drought, but as a permanent way forward. And that is the significant thing. And um, uh, it, it is too easy to open up a tap and water comes out of it. Some of this obviously is not the case in some of our informal settlements. However, but those who do have access to water in their households, it is too easy that between uh, um, opening the tap and flushing the toilet, things are hunky-dory. We see the uh, significant impact that load shedding has had on our, had, had on our lives. And I think it is uh, the reality of water scarcity. We always say that South Africa is one of the 30 uh, most water scarce countries in the world. However, does that really relate or into our actions and our water usage actions. Unfortunately, in our residence today, we haven't managed as a collective to actually cut our water consumption holistically down. Yeah. And I know there's been uh, significant people that has cut the water consumption, but I don't think that that has really carried the message through. Mm. And as a whole, we are still using too much water per person. It's a very big problem. I want to bring in uh, Victor from the South African Human Rights Commission that's based in Limpopo. And we've uh, spoken uh, last year, if I'm not mistaken, around uh, the local government elections when we were based in Limpopo and the majority of people there don't even have access to water. I mean, they've never had running water coming out of their taps. And I know that uh, you had indicated, Victor, that you were going to hold the Minister of Water and Sanitation, Senzo Mpunu, uh, responsible for the fact that there has been no water there. If we think about the Guiani water project that cost taxpayers billions of rands, yet people still don't have water. And I'm presuming the situation has not changed much, uh, Victor. Perhaps you could just tell us more. Thank you very much uh, to you and the listeners. I must say that um, as the Human Rights Commission, we are pushing very hard to make sure that uh, the government is, uh, is, is is delivering water to the people. And uh, when I listen to my learned colleague from Eastern Cape, it's better because that side at least is understandable. They don't have water, but with regard to Limpopo, the situation is different because of our our dams have water, but the government is unable to deliver water to our people, and that is very very concerning because. You, you, we, if we talk about the aging infrastructure, you will understand that we have municipal, municipal infrastructure grant. The question that one can ask is why the government or the municipality are not applying to get the grant to take water to the people. We, we, we have recently, I think it was last year, October, we had a, a hearing inquiry on what, access to water. We also visited the, the municipality that is, I think, is, is the worst performing municipality in terms of delivering water to our people. That is Bembe District Municipality. We, we also engage with the Department of Water Affairs regarding that particular municipality. And we, they, we don't get the, the reason why water has not been delivered to, the, to our people. Because if you look at the dam that is supposed to be, uh, to be, to be delivering water, or the dam that would be supposed to be the main source of water in the province, one is very, it's full right now. So there is no justification as to why the municipality are not delivering water to our people, uh, whereas there is a grant that they cannot, they are not applying. We don't know why. So all those reasons that are given by the government, we, we don't find them to be justifiable reasons because we, 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 water is there. We have been talking about this year in and year out, but there is no improvement in terms of taking water to the people, mm -hmm. at least with regard to uh, a Gyan water project. We have seen some movement, and we, we, we understand that there's, uh, there's, there's something that the government is doing to ensure that people get water. But we still concern as the Human Rights Commission that is, that, is, that, that's, that is too little, too late, because the community that was targeted 
by then, by, by the government some five years ago. The population in that community might have grown now to another to, to add more population that might need more water. So mm -hmm. I, I, I really feel pity that the government is not taking the issue of taking water to the people seriously. And I, I'm happy that we are going to engage with the gov provincial government. I think it can be this way, this coming week, to ensure that we discuss the issue of service delivery to our people, including all the issues that are affecting our people in the Limpopo province. Mm. Well, hopefully it's not just a discussion and there's actually action that's taken because we've had discussions like this time and time again. I want to bring in Sibusiso from Amnesty International. And uh, as I mentioned to um, uh, Barry earlier on that, uh, first it was the Western Cape and now it's the Eastern Cape that's facing day zero and uh, the question is whether or not another province is going to possibly be facing day zero. How dire from your understanding is the actual situation in this country? Is it a thing of there isn't enough water or is it just that we aren't using water wisely and uh, aging infrastructures contributing to wa water scarcity? Good, good, good evening, uh, Heidi, and good evening to the viewers. Um, so as Amnesty International, what we've, we've realized is the fact that, first of all, the, the fact is that South Africa is a, a water scarce country. That's a known fact. Uh, so the main problem is that when it comes to these issues of the aging infra infrastructure or, or even leaks not even being fixed, if you are talking about the case of the Eastern Cape, for instance, you, you, you would realize that uh, it's, a major, it's a major problem because now, if you were if if you were to fix these particular leaks, you wouldn't be losing about twenty nine percent of um, of water to these leaks, which is according to the draft annual report of the municipality. So in terms of the Nelson Mandela Bay municipality, so if you were able to save that much in terms of water, people will still have access to water, and it means that since we are a water scarce country, it means we also know the problems that are there. So as to why these particular problems are not being fixed. It doesn't make any sense in particular. It, 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 when, it, when it comes to um, governments uh, in action in terms of solving these particular problems. Okay, uh, it's yeah, it's quite concerning, and um, hopefully there will be uh, some resolution to this. Let's go to a quick ad break. We'll continue this conversation after the break.